Fora TV. The world is thinking. I, I think that um, we've been, in a way, in, um, in a bit of a, a rut about the way search is conceived for the past uh, 10 years. And I really don't mean this as disrespect to Google at all. I mean, I, I think Google made a tremendous uh, pioneering step in the way information gets accessed this way. But what's happening now is that uh, more and more we're accessing it from devices like this one, from small devices that are with you all the time. They're on and connected all the time. They have all of these sensors uh, besides uh, just the, the, in fact, the, the ability to type stuff in is in a way the weakest element of the phone. Um, you have uh, voice, you have imagery, you have movies that you can take, you have location, compass, um, and, um, and of course you're doing all sorts of other things on your phone as well. And when you think about all of the many implicit signals that all of that gives you about what you might be uh, searching for, or what you might want, or what answers you might want, uh, it's, it's a huge amount of information. It's far greater in a way than uh, the information that I just type into the box. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, models for implicit search and for augmented reality are going to play an enormous role in uh, the next few years of the evolution. Where are the first signs on Bing, uh, on you know, using different signals? For example, when I was in the Alps skiing, as I mentioned before, um, immediately the, the right map showed up where I, uh, in, when I went to the in, in, into the internet on, in this little hut there. So I was really astonished to see that. I, I don't think Google is doing that in Germany. Um, so what are the signals like lo location of the ISP? What, what other signals do you use already? Well, so if you were in the Alps uh, and, and, you, and it was uh, uh, après ski, right? And um, you typed in uh, chocolate, right, in the Alps. Then, uh, of course, if you type in chocolate into you know, either, either bing.com or google.com right now, you'll get some suggestions and you'll get some answers about you know, the Wikipedia page on chocolate and, and how it's smelted and all kinds of nonsense like this. If you type it in in that situation, you want to know where, where, do I, you know, where nearby can I get hot chocolate that is open now? Uh, and you know, ultimately, where is the line shortest and uh, you know, what, what, are the, what are the prices of hot chocolate in different places and so on? How far away and how do I walk there? Those are the answers that you want right now, here and now. Yeah, so I think uh, the thing that I saw that was really different recently, I just got uh, an Android phone. And I have a, I have a speech recognition system in, the car, in my car that's a couple of years old. And I've got a Mongrel accent, you know, it's somewhat American, somewhat Indian, so I, I don't know what it is. And when I say, you know, uh, telephone in my car, it just does something completely random, right? It'll say, give me, say, directions to some random place. And so I just completely gave up on it. And then I got this phone, I was in the car, and when you're driving, you can't, you can't type into the thing, and I needed, I needed to do a search for some, uh, some business. And it worked, and I was really kind of astonished. And so sort of, one of the things that I think that's changing this whole is ability to interact with these devices in ways that we didn't conceive of before, in places we didn't conceive of before. And I think the speech recognition part of it is going to be important in both the car as well as you know, in other locations where you can't have easy access to uh, your hands. And then you can imagine, you know, speech synthesis for producing the answers. So when you're working out and you have, you're thinking about something, you're like, well, you wonder about something. There's no easy way to do that today because you're... Let, let me add one thing. I'm going to come in from a slightly different angle. So one of the things we're very interested in is having answers that come back as applications. So we can build interactively in applications that you can actually interact with. So when you ask a query, you may not just get a dead document or a graph but something that's been built specially for you with sliders or pull downs or whatever that can actually change as uh, with what you want to do. So in a sense, we're sending back a whole application space in the future as opposed to, to just sort of the, 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 the style of graphics and, and other things that, that we're used to. So I think this sort of interface that isn't text, uh, obviously maps is a great example of where that's already gone. Um, is, uh, is an important sort of direction. And I suppose what I think about in this is improving the bandwidth of communication between, if you like, the, the author, which might be the computer, and the reader, in quotes, who you really don't want to be a, a reader in, in a dead sense. You want to be somebody who really interacts with the information. And I think as we're using things on smaller screens, it becomes even more important to be able to interact in this much richer way with the information you get back.